You're at the office. Hungry because you skipped lunch. So you place an order for food from one of the food delivery apps. Everyone's done that, right? It's late in the evening, it's peak hour traffic, and it's raining. But somehow your food is on its way. This is going to be a long wait. We've all experienced it. <clears throat> so you have no other ch choice but to continuously refresh your screen and keep waiting. While this sounds like a bad scenario, it's still food. Still just food. What if this was a different scenario? You were not at the office. You were at a hospital and waiting for time-critical medical supplies, where a matter of minutes could mean life or death. While this may not be a problem for those living in cities yet, unfortunately, for 40% of the world's population not living anywhere close to well-stocked medical centers, this is an all-too-usual scenario. No one should lose a life because of lack of infrastructure. To solve this exact problem, me and two of my closest friends started a drone delivery company about a year ago. <clears throat> Our mission was to make sure that nobody was left behind. You must be thinking, delivering medicines by drones, what is it, what is it like, 5, 10, 15 years down the line? It's actually happening right now right now as we speak. Let me share with you three really interesting use cases of where it's happening, how it's being utilized in day-to-day -day healthcare problems in last mile logistics. You see, the first use case comes from the country of Papua New Guinea, where the infrastructure is completely non-existent. And last year, Papua New Guinea had the largest polio outbreak affecting thousands of kids. And polio, as infectious as it is, can be prevented by the use of vaccinations. But these vaccines have to get to people, right? People living in remote areas usually don't have access to these sorts of vaccines. Fortunately, there were people trying to solve this problem. People like Swiss NGOs, the Gates Foundation, and other <coughs> donors. And this is how a bunch of engineers from Bangalore landed up in Papua New Guinea delivering polio vaccines for over 24 kilometers. We were the first people to actually showcase out of India on how these technologies can help areas of low access. So let me share a short video of the work that we did there. Hi, my name is Dr. Poron Tebu. Um, I served as an um, emergency physician for many years here in Papua New Guinea. I've worked in the rural parts of this country and I think um, you know, this drone technology has, a, has the um, potential to impact many lives. One particular use case I can see for it is, is in uh, delivery of um, antivenom for patients that are, are coming from some of the most rural, remote parts of the, uh, of the country. Um, I've taken care of, of patients who've had to walk three days um, just to get down after being bitten by a snake. Um, I've received patients um, who, you know, if they had received antivenom, um, you know, just even uh, a day earlier, they would have survived. So I think this is a, you know, the technology here in, in these drones has the potential to really save a lot of lives. And um, I'm hoping to see how we can use them in the future uh, to help our fellow population. 
So what you heard Dr. Poro and Temu talk about in that video, and I apologize for the sound quality of it. Uh, we were in a jungle, the phone batteries were dead, so that's how we recorded the video. But what you heard him talk about was uh, he's had patients who had to walk like three days straight right after being bit by a snake, which is, which is horrible. These people don't have access to basic vaccinations, uh, basic uh, snake anti-venom. And we have a solution right here. We have a solution which can help deliver to these people. <coughs> So the problem and the solution are right there, but they're not matching together, right? So the second interest, oh, so, uh, so let, me, let me paint a scenario for you. <clears throat> if you were to take vaccines from this small town of Sogeri to this small settlement in Lavare, it would take you about two, two and a half hours if the roads existed. But during rains, these roads completely wash out. The healthcare workers have to trod rivers literally and crawl through rivers to deliver these small vaccinations or any medical supplies to this small settlement in Lavarere. With a drone, however, this would take you 20 minutes of the round trip. And most of the companies in the world now are capable of making all-weather drones, which can fly in any weather conditions over all terrains. So that's what drone delivery can do. So the second interesting use case tr comes from the island nation of Fiji. We seem to have an affinity for the Pacific. Uh, what they're doing, our friends over at the Pacific Flying Labs, is conquering, trying to solve the problem of mosquito bone diseases. And how they do that is quite interesting. By releasing more mosquitoes in the air. Yes, you heard me right. This solution involves a drone full of thousands of cold, sleeping mosquitoes. Let me share a short video with you. So what you saw in that video was mosquitoes being released by that drone. I'm hoping everybody saw that short snippet in the video where mosquitoes were being released in the air. So let's talk about the science, why, why these mosquitoes are released. They're released in a controlled fashion. They're not released to overpopulate uh, the mosquito populations. And what happens is these mosquitoes have a Wolbachia bi uh, bacteria on it. Wolbachia is quite a dominant bacteria. So when it interacts with any other you know, viruses like, let's say, dengue, Zika, or malaria, it won't let them survive. So all you've got to do is get these two mosquitoes to mate. Let's call mosquito A, Wolbachia. Let's call mosquito B, Dengue, and ask them to mate together. What you'll have is, uh, is the offspring would be dominant in Wolbachia. won't let any other viruses survive in it. Wolbachia is also proven to be non uh, I mean, humans are immune to it. It doesn't affect us. Quite incredible, right? The third use case comes from the African nations of Rwanda and Ghana. It's so common to see drones flying in the air and carrying your blood that hospitals have started taking it for granted. And I will quote a doctor here. Yes, my blood comes from a drone. Where else would it come from? Have you seen the roads outside? What's interesting is that all of these three use cases are happening in developing countries. Countries are using these technologies to leapfrog their broken or non-existent infrastructure. And what excites us the most, personally, is that India has massive problems in healthcare last mile logistics. And we want to be a part of that solution. The government is making regulations as friendly as possible 
for us, for startups like us, to be able to do these sorts of deliveries. So what's next? Are you likely to see a drone deliver the food that you ordered a little while ago to a window near you? Maybe. As regulations for cities catch up for, let's say, e-commerce or food delivery, our focus would remain one. We want to make sure that nobody is left behind. Like I said, that's our goal. Our focus would remain last-mile healthcare logistics. It's time that these technologies are used where they're needed the most. It's time that drones take flight. Thank you. <clears throat>